The United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, and welcome to the Wayne Dupree Show. My name is Hutch Bailey Jr., straight out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. To my left and your right from Minnesota, Jason Robertson. What's going on, Jason? Hey, 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 Hutch and Wayne. Uh, excited to talk about today's topic. What a what a blockbuster yesterday. Holy cow. Yeah, you know, and, and one of the things about that, sometimes events affect people's thinking, and, and that's pretty much occurring to me right now because up until this point i didn't think we would get this far i really didn't i didn't think that a republican oversight committee or weaponization committee or whatever i've seen so many failures that i just you know waved off the whole impeachment thing that whole thing is a waste of time but my mind's changed now i'll tell you when, when you have evidence the way we have right now documented bona fide testimony and evidence you have to impeach no matter no matter whether it's one sided or not if you don't you look like you're playing on the same team you have to you have to address this in my opinion i got a quick i got a question for both of y'all then because um the question was put to comer and jordan last night on jordan and comer last night on hannity and hannity basically was saying the same thing to them he's like well, I mean, what else do you need? Do you, I mean, do you think that you have enough? And Comer said, "I think so." <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think it's going to sway. I think the Democrats are criminals. I don't think it's going to sway them. I don't think it matters what the crime is, murder. I don't think it matters. But for the rest of us, for mm -hmm. a country to maintain at least the sense of law and order. I think you have to act on it. And, and I, again, you know, up until today, I've been against it. Right. Right. You know, against, I thought, the, against the impeachment, against the going down a road that you're not going to win anything on. Yeah. But right. then again, when you look at it, how can you, how can the people have faith in a Republican party with this much evidence? And they just say, ah, never mind. You know, I think it's important to understand too, the breadth and scope of the evidence and what you actually have proof of and what you don't have proof of and the picture it paints. And, you know, if you figure this stuff's been coming out for six months, 12 months, 
you know, you start with the Twitter files, you start with the Hunter Biden laptop, you do the weaponization hearings, you do the IRS whistleblower hearings, FBI, you got Chuck Grassley. And here's the picture of paints. Back in 2015-ish, Hunter Biden started a company selling government access. He didn't mm -hmm. register as a foreign agent. That's a fact. He was mm -hmm. approaching governments and foreign companies saying we have influence in the federal government that influences my dad. You have Hunter Biden completing financial transactions with those people. You have the government taking actions based on that would benefit those people. You have Joe Biden now on the phone with those people, although not talking business. You have 10% for the big guys, but you can't unravel the financial stuff in because there's 17 LLCs, so that's a mess. You have the Department of Justice blocking investigation into those companies through the IRS and, and whatnot. They've they've shut that down. And you have you literally have the entire plot, evidence of it in front of you. The only missing piece is you don't have Joe Biden explicitly saying, I'm gonna take this federal action in exchange for money. But that's you know like what? you've got everything else. Let me jump in there too, because every, I mean, if you want Hunter Biden dead to right, you got him. Right. If you want Joe Biden, you don't have him yet. There is there th there is you know how y'all say slam dunk? This it's not a slam dunk dunk on Biden yet. It could be, though. Unless you produce the tapes that you hear him on. Because right now, you almost have a hearsay of a person that tried to... Uh, and, and and you know, ladies and gentlemen, I, friends, I'm getting ready to say something that probably the Democrats are throwing up right now. But it's true. You have somebody that's getting ready to go to jail for... Uh, I mean, he's not losing anything in, unless he's got some time knocked off, which we don't know about yet. We we really don't know anything because everything was behind closed doors. We He said, oh, yeah, he was on there. Yeah, he was on there. Did, what did he say? Tell us what he said. He Did he say what Joe said on you there? The, you heard what the Democrats said. He was just talking about the weather. I know, I know, right, exactly. So they could frame it that way, and, and that's why I say – Un reasonable doubt is still listen to me reasonable doubt is there where he can get out of it if he wanted to because you don't have his voice you have a hearsay of him saying this and Joe saying well I didn't say that and uh, I mean again you have a you have a slam dunk and that's why Comer came on there last night I, I think so if Comer would have said God darn, we got him. That that's it. That's, okay, fine. Let's go. Let's first let's go um, to church and pray about it, and then let's go and take him down and file these charges and uh, uh, let the chips fall where they may. He said, "I think so." And even Jordan said, "Yeah, yeah, you know, we, you know, we're working on." Y'all have y'all have y'all have brought all these people up there. Do you have them? Do, do you have Joe or don't you? You have him with that circumstantial evidence, and uh, and I hate to sound like Adam Schiff right now, but it's better than but it's better than circumstantial evidence for Joe Biden right now. For real, it is. Well, that's on that, that's on that particular aspect of it, but there's a lot of forensic evidence. There's all kinds of bank evidence, you know, of money going back and forth and suspicious activity reports. And how yeah. about your mansion, Joe? How did you pay for that mansion with a hundred thousand dollars a year salary? Yeah. You know, there's ways to get them. Well, and it's but it's important to understand. But the only that's the only missing dots you have are: can we see the financial records where the money went to Joe, showing he benefited? Which they blocked the IRS from mm -hmm. from looking into. The Department mm -hmm. of Justice did. Mm -hmm. Or do you have Chuck Grassley says that one dude from Burisma has the recordings with Joe Biden. So those would be the final nails in the coffin. But I was describing you said to my missing wife. Dots, you What's said that? missing dots. 
you said missing dots, and that's the only thing that I'm saying. They're still missing. I mean, I mean, it's almost like you have two cords or two huge wires, and they're right here. You just need that one connectivity thing to put this. I mean, it's right there in front of and, you. It's, and this is the joke. This is the joke on the American people. Congress is not a court of law. Right. That's the problem here. This should be being tried in a court of law right. with a bona fide department of freaking justice that cares about justice for the country. It's right. not by a bunch of goofball congressmen that don't know it's what almost, they're doing. It's almost like Comer and Jordan and them are doing the work of the DOJ, and the DOJ is just sitting back and saying, well, you know, it's under investigation. You know, we can't talk about it, which we know now for a fact it wasn't or it hasn't been under investigation. They're just saying that. We and know that, this, right? All this happening directly after they did it twice to our guy. With well, no evidence, with zero evidence. And, and Wayne, you hit on a really important point there. We have multiple whistleblowers who have come out from the IRS guys, from the weaponization committees, who About said, About time. We are right there. We need to interview these people. And the Department of Justice refused. Yes, Why would yes. it, in an impeachment inquiry, you get to bring those people up and question them? If the Department of Justice is not going to connect the final dots, then that's who we should be impeaching. That is. Yeah. Whoever's shutting it down in the department of justice, like this needs to be investigated. And I mean, I described to my wife, we've all played clue. Right. And so you've got the guy in the library with the wrench. You got the dead body there with a wrench shaped, you know, collapsed part of his head. The only thing you don't have is the guy swinging the wrench. And the only way you're going to get that is that the Department of Justice does its job. But there's plenty to say, like, we need to actually get to the bottom of this because who else killed the guy? Like the dude standing there with the wrench in the room alone and is the most we, likely. I think we need to not worry about Hunter Biden. Who cares about Hunter right. Biden? I want Joe. Yep. And, and, and I had asked that question before long ago. I'm like, okay. Who are they really going after? Because at, at first they were just going after um, Hunter, thinking that they could r wrap in Joe as um, as like um, collateral damage, saying, okay, you are connected to him, so that means you're dirty too. So we need to start investigating on you. For the most part, it's changed to, okay, what else do we know about the – you know, we found now we found classified documents in this house. Oh, we found classified documents in another place, in another place. Okay, well, we can bring all that in there. So now it's more on this. And what gets me is that that guy came out yesterday. Who is that guy? Um, I'm the Democrat guy. Gold. Uh, I, I forget his name. Dan Goldman. He is yeah, the new Adam a, Schiff, by the he's way. A goof. Man, what a goof. I've been watching him. Uh, with these here on um, with most of these investigations and stuff, I'm like, oh, he's a he's they selected him. He's a trick that one. Yeah, well, let me explain him. One. But you know, he he got up there and said though he was like, um, well, it's um, and I don't know if anybody caught this. I caught him. Well, it's safe to say. I was it safe to say? Safe to say what? You I mean, safe to say that Biden didn't get caught. So that's how you're gonna start this thing. It's safe to say. Oh, you just you just that's how dumb he is. That, that's I was like, okay, all right, bet. Go ahead. He's not dumb, he's the new Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff for the last six, seven years would go out, run the media tour, and just lie. And he would he would tell this much of the truth, like Dan Goldman's right. Devin Archer, it sounds like, didn't testify. None of us have seen the testimony. Didn't say that, yes, I was there when Joe Biden was discussing the business deal. But he didn't dispute that Joe Biden was there. He was talking to the business customers of Hunter Biden. And they took action that those customers wanted. You know, but he says, yep, yeah, nope. They said Joe wasn't on the phone when he talked to him. And he's even spinning that because we, we haven't seen the, the Archer testimony. But he's saying... Joe Biden didn't negotiate the deals or however he phrased it, which we don't know that. 
we'd have to talk to Hunter Biden or somebody like that. Let me let me just add to the to the thing here. There's a whole lot of people in prison on circumstantial evidence. Oh, right. That's true. That, that is true. That is true. <laughs> when you got the mayor of Moscow coming to Manhattan and having lunch with you, and the next day she's off the list, off the whatever list. I mean, that's pretty pretty clear what happened there. I mean, but again, they're not stupid. I mean, we think they're stupid, but they uh they make little uh, alleyways to get out. Yeah, they've been playing the game for a long time. They now. wrote I the mean, game. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've and been... some of it's funny too. Like Hunter Biden committed a felony of not registering as a foreign agent, and mm -hmm. Trump people in Trump's circle got convicted of that. Yep, that's a crime. Nobody's disputing it. The Department of Justice isn't even investigating or charging. And and I mean, I, I'm going to keep going back to that, like. The Department of Justice is the one who's obstructing justice right now. It's right there. Let's see the bank records. Let's see money going to Joe Biden. And if Joe Biden profited from this, whether he knew it or not, dude's done. But the Democrats will never, the Democrats and the Decepticons in the Senate will never do it. Right. <laughs> they won't. They won't. I mean, yeah. you look behind yeah. Mitch McConnell, there's three duds right in a row. Thune. Cornyn and Barrasso, man. I've been saying it for two years. And if Ernst is behind them, there's, there's more, more of them. Yeah, that's just the ones I yeah. know. Yeah. There's probably but yeah, I mean, I mean, I thought about it. I, I mean another thing too, why was it why was it behind closed doors? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Why was it behind closed doors? That should have been out in public. Uh and I noticed I've been noticing for a while. Whenever they have some type of um, witness or somebody sitting on hot seat like Archer, they usually interview him the day before, and then they come out the next day. And I was like, y'all don't need to do that. And there's Just only one person, one person responsible for that. His name's Kevin McCarthy. Correct. Right. 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 You know, it's, it's like our lifetime. <laughs> Marjorie's boy. But um, either way, you know, I've been saying, I mean, I sit back and I think about it and I was like, if if they had them, they would have them. And they don't have them because of their body language and the way that they are still, I mean, I wouldn't say they're grasping for straws because they have the straws. It's just the way that they're talking. It's like, it's like, it's almost like they know that they need something else. They, they know they need something else and they, I mean that the deal isn't sealed yet for them. I I don't think I don't think for they Joe. have the I don't think they have the authorization to move forward. I think well, the reason then, that they're talking timid is because they don't want to be the ones to pull the trigger. I'm talking about Comer and Jordan. They're sitting there and they're only mid level people. And if, if this is if what I think is going on is going on, this is a full court press. It's all them against the truth. You know, well, because and, it, and that's the thing is, until you get the Department of Justice to step up and do their job or let some of these federal agencies or whistleblowers do their job, you're not going to connect that final dot. The only path forward that the House can do is an impeachment hearing where you can start calling people up and let them testify. Like, no, none of these agencies have been able to sit down with all the people in the Biden family who got money. And say, and all that money traces back to foreign entities. All those folks should have been registered as foreign agents, and none of them were. And those people have not been questioned. And there's limited ways for the House to do that without, you know, some sort of official action. But the bigger question for the American people is with all this evidence and you got the guy standing there over the dead body, why doesn't the department of justice, you know, check the tapes? That, why don't Democrats care? Right. Why don't Democrats realize we're turning into Nazi Germany here? And that's another thing that I was thinking about yesterday too. I was like, wait a minute. If they really want to get rid of Joe, if they really, really don't want him to run, they wouldn't be up there defending him like this right now. You know what, though? Something to watch in the next week. Watch how much camera time Kamala Harris gets. Oh, yeah. She's already out. She's about. going on a tour. She, they're, they're putting her out there. 
We'll see. I mean, that's the, that's the report I read. I didn't see her yet, but if well, I start and I think, seeing Kamala Harris on every show on every network, man, it's kind of kind of. Well, I was going to say happening. she's been out going after DeSantis now for a week or two, and I yeah. think yeah. I think they're kind of setting up where they're like, okay, if it's Trump, we throw up Biden, and if Trump is unable to run, we throw up Harris. We roll Biden. We we bring out Harris to go against DeSantis or Gavin Newsom who's been all over everything too. Well, I tell you, well, get ready for get ready for the show today. That town hall, man, boy, is that an anti-Trump website. Jeez. Three <laughs> yeah, articles right in a row, man. Boom, boom, boom. It's like, give it up guys. Daily wire is the same way. Uh, it's, it's horrible. Town hall and um, Breitbart. Um, oh. They, I mean, everything that is negative toward Donald Trump, you don't have to go to the liberal websites anymore. You can go to the right. conservative to check it out. Um, the reason why I said the Biden lied, or that they lied, um, is because I'm because I'm going off of what uh, Smiling um, Archer um, said in well was supposed to have said in testimony. We don't know because we didn't see the testimony. We didn't see him give it. We just heard them come out and summarize it. But Joe has said in the past. He hasn't talked to How anybody. How many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. Biden met with at least 14 of Hunter's business associates. And the president doesn't have uh, dealings with his family members about business. I, I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. He was deeply involved in Hunter Biden's business doing something. There was a broad range of Russian disinformation. But I never discussed a single thing with my son about anything having to do with Ukraine. Then Vice President Joe Biden joined dozens of his son's business meetings by speakerphone. I'm not sure that's a conflict of interest. I don't discuss business with my son. He was a large part of Hunter's business dealings, that he was an equity partner. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. I've never discussed my business or their business, my sons or daughters, and I've never discussed them. I am sitting here with my father. We would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. This is a president that respects the rule of law. There's not one single bit of evidence. They uncovered evidence the president's son pressured a potential Chinese business partner to move ahead with the deal by invoking his father. Not one little tiny bit. The only thing he had to offer was access to his father. I'm just not going to speak to it from here. There is zero, 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 zero evidence. He kicked back up to 50% of his earnings to his dad. The president had, was never in business with his son. You can bet that coming in the future, they'll be parsing the meaning of in business. Miranda Devine. <laughs> you know what I kept thinking of? I kept thinking of those pictures that came out after Biden's debate with Paul Ryan. Oh, remember those smiling. pictures? Oh man, that face. He's so yeah, ugly. I remember, yeah, I remember that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, go ahead. And that's what's funny. How is the liberal media not going, wait a second? No matter what, Joe lied to us about talking to these people. I mean, there's just facts that are proven. Like, he he went out there and said he had nothing to do with any of this, but he talked to 20 of Hunter Biden's clients, and he never looked at your son and go, hey, what do you do for those guys? You, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks for that $3 million, but other than that, what's going on here? Were you really selling art? Right. Oh, wow, the weather's great outside. Yeah. <laughs> weather's great. I'm going to hand it back over to my son right now. Really? Seriously? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's the other thing. That's the other thing. It's all, all these people, the media is killing that brand, man. I'm telling you the brand of the media, we're going to wake up one day and there's not going to be any more media, right? They're going to turn off the lights. They're not going to be able to pay the electric bill. Yeah. Uh, I, and yeah. And I don't, even, think... it used to be funny. It's not even funny anymore. Yeah. I mean, or, and, from a, and from somebody who can't even um, recognize his, uh, his grandchild. Uh, you know, I mean, that tells you just who he is in the first place. And, you know, I mean, even even um, George Herbert recognized his little brown grandchildren. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, boy. 
<laughs> you remember that? He called them brownies or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. They go way back with Mexico. <laughs> he said, yeah. This old is George Trevor Washington. Yeah. You see, the, there's, you see the little brown window over there? That's my grand boy right there. That's yeah. That's the president that's has great. made being a family man. Well, I think this weekend he did acknowledge the identity. seventh grandchild. Uh, it's not Republicans, with all due respect, who made Hunter Biden into a complete scumbag on this and other issues. Right. The, the ignoring his own daughter the, for four years and the president of the United States hanging up a stocking for the dog. I mean, the and not for his seventh grandchild. Okay, look, okay, we, can, we can also have Marine, some, we can also have we, sympathy for people who are struggling with addiction. Let's right, keep this conversation right. respectful. I, 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 listen, I, I totally agree. And you know where I'm from? A lot of families deal with addiction. And you know who ends up picking up the pieces? The grandparents. And in this case, the grandparents would not acknowledge this little girl. It is offensive. But the bottom line is. But they have now. The poll. Oh, what a hero. The polling must have been yeah, brutal. Just the polling sure must have been the, brutal. The <laughs> I love it. I love it. A Republican with balls. <laughs> what were you getting ready to say, Jason? Well, I was just going to say, like, he's he's finally forced to admit that he has a grand, a seventh grandchild. So God love him. Court cases will do that. Right. <laughs> I wonder how he's doing with his uh, post uh, trial uh, list of things he has to abide by. <laughs> Hunter, I'm talking about. Did they give him a, a test yet? A urinalysis? He better get a job. <laughs> that too. <laughs> get a job. You know, that's crazy what a judge said. Hey, uh, Hunter, uh, I know your father is the uh, vice pre- I, is president, but you need to get a job. You know what? Real quick before we go to before we go to break, I gotta play this. I I, I it's um oh man, ladies, okay. I'm gonna break it down. Then we'll play the video, and then we're going to break. We're broadcasting on Red Voice Media Network. You know how the old uh, quote is. For the people in jail, some of the smartest people are in jail because how they can make things out of little, the smallest things and escape or do this or do that. There's some smart people out here in the world too. And um, I was just doing a story. Well, I was talking to my son last night about the young young lady in Atlanta or Alabama or whatnot that uh, worked for Amazon that stole nearly ten million dollars. $10 million bought a mansion, $1 million mansion around the street from Amazon <laughs> around the street from where she worked, bought a million dollar mansion. Also bought a Labr- Labrigani. She also see, I call that a stupid criminal. Yeah, a stupid criminal. Well, check this out. Former general manager at a Wendy's in Lancaster County was found stealing from the store, according to an audit. Linda Johnson allegedly checked in and out as a fake employee for over a year from July 2021 to April 2022. Officials say that the theft amounted to almost $20,000. Documents from the investigation say that Johnson admitted to creating the fake employee and that the paychecks went to her cash app. <laughs> she should have booked up. She should have booked up. She stayed there too long. Six months, she should have jetted with 10 grand, boy, and went to another one like, and did it all over again. Dude, I'm like, she couldn't, you know what? That, that, I mean, seriously. That's a lot she of hamburgers. She needs to be in jail. That's ingenious, though. That, I mean, they, you create a fake employee, but who, you clock in and clock out. Where's Johnny? The mob's, uh, been, the mob's been doing that for 100 years, man. Right. Uh, yeah. That's why yeah. they control the unions. <laughs> they all got jobs, man. <laughs> they all got paychecks. Yeah, but they, they don't all jobs. got jobs. They all got jobs they can report on taxes. Right. They, they don't mess around. That the laundromat do. does fifty million dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the store, the storefront laundromat. Yeah. Right. We're getting ready to. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have more here on the Wayne Dupree podcast. Hutch Bailey Jr., Jason Robinson, myself. Here on Red Boys Media, you can catch them at redboysmedia.com. Don't forget to check out Red Boys Media um, on Rumble. Attention Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. 
Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe cusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks for When I met my husband, Chuck, he was famous for doing things like this. Now he's in his 80s, and he's still doing this for fun. And since we live on a ranch, he's up at sunrise doing things like this. Isn't that right, honey? That's right. He's stronger, can work out longer, keeps up on his ranch chores, and has plenty of energy left over for his grandkids. I've made just one change. I still feel like I'm in my 50s. I've started doing this too, and I've never felt better. I feel 10 years younger, and my body looks leaner, and I have energy all day. Chuck made a video that when explained- When I met my husband, Chuck, he was famous for doing things like this. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. Um, great news. Just uh, just got some great news just a couple seconds ago. And I want to share it with you. It looks like we're finally on terrestrial radio. Um, I, I just accepted an offer for a Sunday slot uh, between 4 and 5 p.m. starting this Sunday on WCBM. All and right. Good job. So a uh, topical mix of current events and issues from a local and national perspective. And um, I just accept it. So we're going to be on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I have to say, I, I, um, I have to say, uh, and hopefully bigger and better things. Y'all know what I'm saying? Bigger and better things. But um you know, I never expected to be doing radio uh, from like, I, you know, my mom, gospel radio. So w when I was growing up, I was, psh, you know, some she does radio. Are naturals, man. Some people are just naturals, you know. Well, a, I have I mean, to say this. Let, let me let me re rephrase that. Not everybody can sound natural on the radio. Some of oh, us yeah. can. Some of us can, but not, I mean, it's, there, there's nothing worse than listening to somebody who can't, like DeSantis. Right. <laughs> don't well, don't, you know don't be you, socially awkward like him. <laughs> you know what I have to say, and and I'm not I'm not trying to blow their heads up, but if you haven't heard Hutch Bailey Jr. and Jason Robinson on radio, y'all are missing something. If you haven't heard their voices on radio. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't be on video, but they are radio worthy. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. They are radio worthy, radio right now worthy. And that's one of the things that um, I used to think about when I was looking at 
my host um, that I would bring on and and stuff like that's why uh, Hutch has been with me since I was six years old. Um, <laughs> but, I thought you guys were brothers. Yeah, well, we are. He's older. Um, I was adopted. See, six <laughs> years old. But I mean, it's like when I go back and I listen to. Oh man, when I go back and I listen to um, Hutch and Jr. for those Sunday shows, and when they're talking. I'm like, dang, they sound like this is what they're for. I mean, they sound natural. And just like you said, some people sound natural. Some people sound like they should like, have no business. Like you said, day. like you said, from when you were a kid, it's the same way with me. We used to, we used to have, we used to pretend we were, because radio was, the, was all that, the bag of chips back in the day. Oh yeah. When, there was, was, when there was only three TV channels and my house had black and white TV. Radio was it. You could mm-hmm. your mind could do whatever it wanted while you're listening to the game or listening to the talk shows. But ever since I was a little kid, we used to set up those little cassette tape recorders with the little microphone it came with, and we pretend like we were running a radio show. We play records and everything from a young age, and it's just something I always wanted to do. I just always did. And uh, podcasting, I'm so glad that came out. It just uh, I am too. It, it's am- really been fun. Well, podcasting is so interesting, too, because it lets you kind of engage with people like you do through the radio, where I'm sure a lot of people listening to our show throw on the podcast while they're doing stuff around the house or doing things. I mean, this morning I was fixing my garage door and I had a podcast on while I was working on it. And and it's so powerful, too, because you're not you you get to tell the truth. Like we talked about the facts of the Joe Biden case. And there's nobody coming at you to say, well, you can't say that or don't say that or you have to say yeah. this, you know. I'd have to tame myself a little bit. Yeah, yeah. me too. I mean, you know what? And that's one thing about um, um, online, too. It's like, you know, I mean, I well, that's one thing about terrestrial. It's like, yeah, somebody's, you know, paying, somebody's paying those bills, man. Yeah, you- somebody's got the dump button. <laughs> oh, no. Hutch is talking about railroads again. <laughs> <laughs> something some something happened this past Sunday. Um they were playing a clip and I knew that the clip was coming down to the end, you know, and I looked over and and the guy that was in the production seat had to go and get something. So there was nobody in the production seat. I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I said this street go by the window. <laughs> I, I could I could stop laughing. I, oh man, this is man, this is radio, man. I, I love this. But no, I, um, WCBM. Uh, you can download the app. It's a free app. Uh, you can email them. You can text them on the show. Hutch and Jr. will be there uh, uh, for as much as they can uh, because uh, you know they. I love their perspective and. I've always been one to take people wherever I go. You know that. I mean, I, you know, I used to have people. I, I used to have people a long time ago. So remember, remember when we showed up at CPAC and had more people than CNN? We had more people than <laughs> CNN, MSNBC. It was like twelve of us, man. It was crazy. We, we were a little podcast network, and we were broadcasting from, from almost sun up to sundown at CPAC, <laughs> and we didn't pay a booth. No. We didn't pay the booth fee, <laughs> and we were live, and we were—I mean, we were, man. <laughs> we we had more people, man. We had more people. Maybe a uh, hey, red voice. Think about the GOP convention next year. Get that, get that in your mind real quick, so that we totally need a red voice media booth. Yeah, at um, CPAC or, well, think CPAC too, but also think the GOP convention. So. Uh, in, in, in Wisconsin, you have got to think about those things. Um, so yeah, so WCBM AM radio, they're going to be a hundred years, hundred years old next year. Good deal. A hundred years old. Nin- 1924 is when they first went live. So, uh, boy, that's a yeah. heck of a station too. They got some good programs on there. You yeah, know, I'd do. never heard of them from Minnesota yeah. until you were on couple weeks ago and i was looking at their lineup i mean kim's show like 
I'd love to have I her know, on here. Yeah. She's a blast. Yeah, I, I I have her on here. I have her on here. She um, you know, I she's my she's my little sister. I again, it's funny. These people used to be on this show right, before yep. they went to several the, times. Several times. Kim Kim was just starting out when she, you know, she, she was just starting out. And we we had her on the show a couple of times and um uh now she has a morning show on WCBM, you know. Um uh, and I mean I'm I'm tickled I'm tickled pink for those who I don't know if this is going to sound the right way because I don't need to hear that I helped you, but I love to hear people come back and say, you helped me yeah. get to where I am right now. Because sometimes I lose track of people like that, but I also see people that have made it and they never say anything about it. They never come back and, you know, so I'm like, for, for the people that come back, uh, you know, it's, it, are you saying it's Bill great. Mitchell's not coming back? Did, did you, you get that DM? I did you get that? Did you DM see what I happened to him? Did that you get boy, that DM? I sent you. I saw, I saw that. I mean, I, I I saw it on Twitter. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw it last night. Well, I saw it this morning because um, I was on my iPad last night and that didn't my buddy show up. And I was like, "Woo!" You messing with the wrong woman, Bill. Oh, is Man. that the Roseanne Barr one? You, you don't want to mess with Roseanne. You don't want to mess with Roseanne. Roseanne will f you up two, two, two times she, a Sunday. She belittled him, didn't she? Yeah, she did. She did. I don't even know you. She drove over him for and then backed up and then drove over again. And just... she has her way of doing things, boy. She you should yeah. mess with her. I gotta yeah. say, but she's got know. a po- she's got a podcast yeah. going herself, and I've seen her on a few shows promoting it. She is oh it's, it's better than her TV show, like it's spectacular. And some people have that calling, okay. Some people are in the wrong place. Many people, many people are in the wrong place. Uh as you grow up, you will learn that there is a purpose. There, there believe me, there is a purpose for you. And I always I always say this: when your purpose is done, it's time for you to go. It's time. I mean, it's time. It, uh, um, I agree with you. I'll give you a good example. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And, you know, a lot of times I get up here and I'm like, boy, the stuff I say, man, I'm, th- there's a lot of people out there, a lot stronger than me, organizations that I'm, if anybody hears me, I'm going to be a threat to them. And I maybe I shouldn't do this. And then I, I say to myself, you know, look, we're in historic times right now. And you don't get to choose if you're chosen or not. You either get chosen or you don't get chosen. And for us to get up here every day like we do, I think we're on a mission. I think we know it. Yeah. yeah. We we are here for a reason. All three of us are here at this particular time for this particular moment. Because if, because if we weren't, no, well, if we weren't here, well, if we, you know, God darn, you know what I'm I don't think we're here by ourselves. I think there's right. others that are helping us. We're not sitting here trying to say that we're the salvation of the world. It's just that I am something, something pushes us to do something pushes me to do this. Right. You know, yeah, I, I, gotta heard, say, I heard you, man. God yeah. works in funny ways. Yeah, and like, does. for me, like I had a corporate career, I did a bunch of stuff. And then my wife's like, do something that's fulfilling. And like, I think the single biggest problem with America and the world right now is the corrupt media and our corrupt government establishment. And if this little show and some of the things we do online through social media or videos or whatever helps break that narrative, like that's purpose. And as more people wake up, like there's nothing more fulfilling than like this last week. And I told you about it. My buddy who voted for Joe Biden, we've been friends for 20 years, best men in each other's weddings. And uh, and he's like, wow, so this Hunter Biden thing's real. And I'm like, oh, dude, like I've been telling you that for years. And he's like, he finally saw somebody mention it on CNN or something. And it, it finally hit him. And then he like sat down and he's like, okay, tell me what it is. And they kind of start walking him through. And he's like, this is really a thing. I'm like, yeah, there's congressional testimony. Like 
follow one of my Facebook pages. We share the videos from the testimony. And he's like, this is wild. Mm -hmm. And moments like that are, and you know, you see him in the chat, you see the trolls. And then eventually the trolls like will realize the government media is lying to them. And it's not a Republican Democrat thing. You're being mm -hmm. lied to and manipulated and controlled. By both. By both. You, you know what? You know what else? You know what else? I um, I thank God for is um, I mean, Donald Trump came exposed some things, and many people say Donald Trump exposed certain things. Okay, I'll go along with y'all on that. But C-SPAN exposed a whole lot of stuff too. When when I was well, watching, probably nobody watches it, right? Right, and. Yeah. And that's the issue. If you mm -hmm. happen to watch it, you're going to wake up. I don't care who you are. You're going to wake up to the crap that's happening in Washington, D.C. In Washington, DC. And at some of these live events that happen, too, because they also cover those type of events. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm just glad that Donald Trump was uh, uh, speaks or decided to speak what we were saying. And I'm I'm, I'm glad that many people of the silent majority said, okay, we for this time, we're going to let you speak. For this time, yeah. we're going to jump behind you. Because we have to say that. He, something again, else, that, something yeah. we got to do here. You know, I get so sick of the argument, or the conversation always goes back to, well, they just watch the mainstream media. That's all they listen to. That's all their point of reference is. Well, guess what, man? The time for that's over. Right. We got to start holding to task the American people. You people that are in our chat room that are giving us the trolling trolling business every day. I challenge you to go find 10 new news outlets. You, It's up to you to start digging more. You can't just listen to ABC and make that an excuse for you being stupid. You can't yep. do it. You have to go search out the information you owe it to the rest of us to get on the right page. You're being bull. You're being tricked. You're being tricked. <laughs> well, and people Vandal wonder why is. folks fall for that. And I think the average American just wants to get up, go to work, love their family, plant can't their garden. Can't do it anymore. Can't do it. We can't right. afford that. And, and, I agree. And, and I mean, I think between the three of us, we consume more C-SPAN than probably any other station. And you watch these hearings and you watch this stuff coming out. And then you think to yourself, my God, that should be front page news. And instead of covering like real stuff, they're like, oh, did you see the UFO hearing? Like, come on, that's just such a such a waste, you know? I mean, and we're not targeting Democrats yet. You Democrats, come with us. We'll slay some Republicans. Let's go. Right. That's what I don't understand is that people can get on. People can jump into that chat. People can jump into our, what you call it. And and bold, and tell bold face lie, but y'all just uh, talk about Democrat. No, we no. don't. And 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 you're not taking the time to listen. And even if you are listening and you're not catching what we're saying, then that's something that you have to deal with. Because I know for a fact. Oh uh, yeah, Pat Mooney, you clowns are absolutely laughable. Realize, Donald why are you watching us? Then? you for eight years. Now. And you know what? That's another thing I don't understand too. People, people will get will find you on social media, Jason Hutch. They'll find you on social media, and they'll say, "You know what? Y'all are dumb, and y'all are being paid by the Trump campaign." And they'll yeah. follow you. Yeah. They'll follow you. It's like, wait a minute. You are saying I'm dumb? You are saying I, that I don't have a, um, a a collection of how to grapple ideas and stuff? And you follow me on social media? I don't understand. It. See, Come Debbie on. nailed it. Republicans lie. Pat, you are 100% right. Now, all you need to do is draw the conclusion that the Democrats are lying to you, too. And then you're there. The, the Republicans are lying to you for the Democrats. <laughs> right. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Don't worry. You'll figure it out. Hope yeah. You <laughs> well, I mean, he's halfway there. He's figured out Republicans are lying. You know, and I tell the story. But when I was growing up and we kept blowing up countries in the Midi Middle East, and there was always some valid reason for why we do it. And I'm like, I think the reason's probably for oil and money. 
I could be wrong. And then turns out it was for oil and money and for money. Oil. Anyway, we never got any oil out of it. Right. But, it was, it was but yeah, just, it was because of oil and like that, it, that was all tied together. And now, I mean, it's like this solar stuff or the green new deal. Like you're all being played just like Republicans were back in the seventies and eighties and nineties by the oil companies. And you're just too stupid to see it. See, I think the countries in the Middle East were targeted not for their oil. I think they were targeted because we could beat them. Oh, that could be. You know, yeah. still they make as much money. I mean, it's just it's a little right. safer than messing with Russia. You know, mess with oh. a old Afghan tribesman or whatnot. Right. Oh, Russia. Oh, oh, Russia. Um, did y'all hear what? You know, y'all were talking about the Abrams tanks and what? Did y'all hear what? What? Um, the Biden administration is doing with the Abram tanks? No. They're, send, they're, sending, uh, they're sending the tanks over to Ukraine, but they're taking out uh, we do that some, all the time. some um, very important stuff yeah. that is supposed yeah. to be used. So if they're taking out, if they're taking that out, then aren't you like already um, setting them up to fail? <laughs> because the tanks use that stuff to be at top tip shape. If you take all that stuff out, you're just getting the tank. It's mostly fire control to put the steel on target and it's communications equipment, stuff like that, that we don't want. I mean, I don't know why they're taking it out. Just all they got to do is go to Afghanistan to find it. Right. You know, we, we, we left it all over there. You know, I mean, might as well send them the whole thing. It says and here, um, the the U.S. made Abram tanks that Washington promised to Kiev might arrive in Ukraine without some of their advanced equipment. Several Western news media outlets have reported such components are reportedly sensitive, are considered too sensitive and too sophisticated to be handed over to the Ukrainian military. The tanks might lose some of their most sophisticated electronics before seeing combat in Ukraine, uh, according to Newsweek. Uh, the tanks are deemed to be more complicated platforms than other western armor heavy armor and operating them would require additional training so why didn't we send it over there in the first place they shouldn't have well we were saying that from the beginning when you talk about the tanks or some of the patriot yeah. defense missiles or the f-16s when you send those over there you need to send all the infrastructure first you got to have somebody who knows how to use them then you got to have somebody yep. who knows how to fix them then That's you got to have somebody Vindman. who knows what the parts are that's where yep. vinman comes in Right. Yeah. And there's a lot yeah. of vendors, believe me. He probably has there's his company ready to go. He did. Yeah. You know, Hutch, you should expand on that because I don't think people realize that. Well, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the Army Reserve, which is where I served at my highest rank, I was on active duty as well during the war, but uh, we had a thing called, we even had an acronym for it, the RICRA. It was called the Retired Colonel's Reemployment Act. Because all these guys, when they hit full bird, they were cozying up with those contractors, buddy. They're telling, <laughs> the, they're telling the contractors the same way Hunter Biden was telling Barisma. I got the phone numbers. I know where all these tanks are. You know, where the money is. Contract. And now the next thing you know, they call me up. It's this colonel that I knew that retired. He's now executive vice president for this company. Over <laughs> and he wants me to give the address all the all the units that have this certain type of truck that they want to yeah. rebuild. Yeah, right. Sorry. Well, and that's what's funny. They should, be, so they, should, they should use law enforcement against that stuff. I'm sorry. If you I'm only at, laughing. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, if you look laughing. at Alexander Vindman, like he came into the public sphere with impeachment one and the whistleblower call about Trump, but he he's like, he's all in in Ukraine. He's a and now that he's left the government, yeah. he's making millions and millions and yeah. millions of dollars mm -hmm. supporting the war effort in exactly Ukraine. Exactly what you said, all the maintenance of the equipment. That's what he's doing. Right. And that's what we always yeah. do. And nobody, especially like average people, can't go, okay, so perhaps he had bad intentions when he was serving his final terms in the government because he wanted war in Ukraine. Cause Oh, by the way, that's where he's going to go make a million dollars. Well, he like went to ranger school. He went to ranger school in, at Fort Benning and at the Dahlonega, Georgia and the, and the uh, camp down in Florida and his peers, the people that were in the class with him in his ranger class hated him. They tried to get him thrown out. He was so bad. 
Right. Mm-hmm. And they, they let him stay in back when he was a younger officer, not a lieutenant colonel. Well, he looks he looks he looks super weird too. Uh, before before we um, before we go to break, this this kind of hits home uh, for me, and I know it's going to hit home a little bit for my military buddy right there, and and, and you know what too for um, Jason too because Jason is also a patriot uh, too. But um, when it comes down to the military, there's a declining confidence in Americans in their trust in the military. Actually, it's at an historic low. Take it is down at the an- CCP. <laughs> um, Americans are, uh, fewer Americans are confident in their military than at any time since 1997. Our armed forces are currently dealing with historic, historic recruitment crisis as public confidence in the military has decreased by 10 points over the last two years. A June poll found compared to 60, 64% the previous year, 60% of respondents had a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in the military. It fell to 6% in 1997 when it was uh, 58%. You know, when I was looking at some of the videos of basic training, it took me back to my basic training. And I was looking at that yesterday for about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. I was looking at some of those videos Looking at those military instructors yell at those like green kids that don't know what to do and where to go and they don't know how to do and I saw them making up their beds and stuff and I was like, I miss that. <laughs> I did. I miss that. I miss. I, I oh, and they went to the child hall and they're the dude is sitting there in his coat eating and the person comes over. Why you got your coat on? Why you eating? Take your coat off. Why you eating? You know, kind of yelling and stuff. And I'm like. I miss that. I miss the real military to what it is right now. Oh, yeah. I, I would not sign up. I wouldn't. I wouldn't sign up today. I remember I remember going to basic training, and I had already been to Valley Forge Military Academy and the Naval Sea Cadet Corps, so I already knew military stuff. I knew how to march and everything, right? So we're sitting there, and they take us to Fort Knox, and the first three days is in what they call in the Army a reception station. So you're there and they pay you half of your paycheck up front. So you have enough money to go to the PX or whatever, get your cigarettes or whatever. And we're sitting there for these three days and we're about at day two and I'm starting to make friends. Right. And I was like, Hey man, this ain't it. This shit didn't start yet. I'm telling you, trust me, this is not it. This is, Something's getting ready to hit us. And they made us get on that bus. Oh Lord. We got on that bus with all our stuff. And they yeah. parked about a mile and a half away from the barracks. So we'd have to carry our stuff up there. That bus parked. And then five drill sergeants got on that bus. And started oh, man. They started throwing people out the back, out the front. <laughs> Get over there, Rose, 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 Rose. You got the, the duffel bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. We got, we got there. Yeah. We got there about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, um, San Antonio. We took a bus through through the streets of Texas to to Lackland Air Force Base. Everything was dark, you know. We we don't know where we're going. Everybody was quiet on the bus because they're scared. We get to the barracks. Everybody gets their 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 bed. They're laid out in there. About four thirty, quarter to five, man. They come in there with those trash, those steel <laughs> trash cans. Lids. They're throwing the trash cans up against the wall. They're throwing it on those hard floors. You you ain't never heard it. You would think it was 1776 up there, the, the way the, the sound things are going on. It's like, you know, you're standing up there, and you realize, I'm not home no more. I am yes, drill sergeant! Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. It, I mean, and oh, my God. People yelling at you, and they're not your parents. You don't know what to do. You can't From hit all them. sides. Yes, yes. And oh man, don't show weakness because then they're gonna be on you for about three or four weeks, you know. But that's what I miss for some odd reason. I miss that. I miss marching to my classes. I miss sitting at the chow hall and only having two and a half minutes to eat a full plate meal. Eat with both you know? hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'll you know, tell you but- what though, I never ate so much in my life. It took me a couple of weeks, but yeah, I 
I learned how to do it. I learned how to do it. But drinking two glasses of water didn't help either. We had to drink two glasses of water before each meal. Ooh. So by the time we got fin- finished the water, sound like they're cutting man, down we on the full loss. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Jesus. I just never ate three meals a day like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like, it's I, still I, hard I, to eat three meals a day. <laughs> it is, it is, isn't it? <laughs> but when you're burning yeah. it off like that, I mean, you needed those three meals in in training like that. Ooh. I and and um, I I love women. I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't gonna, you know. But I gotta tell you, <laughs> with some of the most homely, homeliest looking women that I've ever seen in my life in basic training, they were like, Ugh. When I, and when then I was, look, when I was, but in then, Iraq, but then all of a sudden, but, after you stare at them for a little bit, you're like. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> when I was in Iraq, they had all these porta potties, right? And people right. like to write like to write stuff inside them. Right. <laughs> some, some funny stuff too. Some funny stuff. And it was male and female. There was no male or female porta potties. Everybody used the same porta potties, right? Right, right. And this one said, and I forget her name, it's like whatever her name was, it's like, hey Kathy. <laughs> You're going home in 19 days, and you're going to be ugly again. <laughs> <laughs> she was a fob queen. <laughs> <laughs> there I oh, man. Hey, all my, my friends, all of you that uh, we love so, so dearly, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to have more here from Jason Hutch and myself here on the Wayne Dupree show red voice media network will be right back when i invented my pillow my passion was to help each and every one of you and 20 years later all of your support is what keeps us going because of you we've been able to create thousands of usa jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever to so thank you my employees and i are bringing you a limited edition my pillow the Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, Thanks America! We interrupt today's programming to bring unfortunate news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. So take action now. The Federal Reserve's phased deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard and put your hard-earned assets in jeopardy. But here's the good news. There's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Speak to someone at American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Dial 833, the number 2 USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833-287-2465. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Call 833, the number two USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833-287-2465. Act swiftly, 833-287-2465. All right, welcome back to the Wayne Dupree podcast, along with Hutch Bailey Jr. and Jason Robinson. I got some point. One of the challenges for Joe Biden in the context of the Democratic primary is that he's an institutionalist. I think that, again, is sort of this reverence for the institutions and the norms. And it's a guardrail. He, I mean, he's done it for a lot of years. He knows that that's... And he's an institutionalist. He's an institutionalist. Require, I mean, does your love and reverence for our institutions make you do a hard thing and look at shaking up the institutions? Will you look at court reform again? Joe Biden is a moderate, he's an institutionalist, he's campaigned about restoring normalcy such that it exists. President Biden, the Congressional Black Caucus said the Supreme Court has thrown into question its own legitimacy. Is this a rogue court? 
this is not a normal order. Make no mistake, this decision is a culmination of a deliberate effort over decades to upset the balance of our law. If elected, would you move to add more justices to the Supreme Court? If elected, what I will do is I'll put together a national commission of bipartisan commission of. It's a realization of an extreme ideology and a tragic error by the Supreme Court, in my view. And I will uh, ask them to, over uh, 180 days, come back to me with recommendations as to how to uh, reform the court system, because it's getting out of whack. You said this court is not normal. What did you mean? What I meant by that is it's done more to unravel basic rights and basic decisions than any court in recent history. And uh, that's what I meant by not normal. It was three justices named by one president, Donald Trump, who were the core of today's decision to upend the scales of justice and eliminate a fundamental right for women in this country. So you're telling us you're going to study this issue about whether to pack the court. No, whether there's a number of alternatives that are go well beyond packing. This is a live ball. Oh, it is a live ball. No, it is a live ball. We're going to have to do that. This is a sad day for the country, in my view. It's a good I thing there's people out in the court that are smart enough to realize he ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah. Samuel and Alito came out and said that, and he's right. Yeah. Yeah. Alito, Alito is also the one that came out and said that Congress, uh, Congress doesn't have any right or any authority over them. That's what I meant, yeah. 100% you know, true. It, it is true, and I hope that they fight the I think they will. legislative branch on trying to control them because they're supposed to be equal partner, right? three equal powers, right? It's supposed to be three, legislative, executive, and judicial. You yep. Now, oversight is one thing, but controlling the judicial is another. If the legislative controls the judicial, you know how we talk about this country's over? The country's over. The country's over if that's the case because they can make laws they can, and they can force them through the courts if they were in charge of the ju of the Supreme Court, mind you. And that's what Democrats are trying to do. They're yes, trying they to are. they're trying to jump in charge of the Supreme Court. And they're trying to use the American people as useful idiots. When you see him up there, he's blaming everything in his world on Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump put these three justices in, and they're the ones that did all this. And they make it illegitimate. Women have the right to murder their babies wherever they are. You know, you look at the damage that, that, that left this Supreme Court that they packed did to this country. Look how many babies were murdered because of that. Hell, we fought the Civil War because the Supreme Court wouldn't stand up and Dred Scott. You know, they could have ended all that. Well, and I think what's important to understand is, one, the legislative, executive, and judicial branch all are independent of each other, and they all are designed to function independently. And that's designed to be a check and balance. The second thing is like with the abortion ruling, it just became a state's right issue. Like the federal government does not, according to the Constitution, have the right to say what state's laws are in regard to that issue. And that's the kind of thing that's supposed to be pushed down to the states. So Minnesota can be pro-abortion and Texas can be anti-abortion. And then you move to those places that share your values. That's how it's designed. And and it, it's like the abortion thing is spun so poorly. If if you're in a state that has more restrictive rights, then move somewhere mm -hmm. else. And if you're in a state that has too liberal of rights, then forced to change those rights at the state and local level. And if you're a gung-ho abortion supporter, you better get right with God. Yes. You know, I was just looking at the numbers here. And um, Biden said, Donald Trump... Uh, uh, put three justices on the court and change all the well Reagan put four. Reagan put four. And George H. W. Bush used to put liberal justices on there. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, again, they hate this man. Mm -hmm. They hate us too. They, they hate, right. They hate him for, for standing up for us because for the longest they felt that th they could run rough shot uh, on us. I usually liken to uh, liken the American people and um, the government to um, those dog races where they put that thing, uh, you know, electronic thing that they chase after Rabbit. and stuff. Rabbit. That that's what they that's what government has been doing to the American people. They they light that thing up and then they let those dogs loose. And then and they never catch the rabbit. They can lie, cheat, steal, fleece, whatever to the American people. And the American people, what did I say? Like battered women, battered yeah. women syndrome. It's like, mm -hmm. can I take it? Keep on. Okay, I fix you some. I fix you a sandwich now. You know, it's like, why can't y'all just say, you know, I'm not going to take this no more. I'm not going to take it anymore. I, 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 you know, I, I see. Locally. That's why I say go out there and find different news wherever you're getting your news. Go somewhere different. Yep. Yes. And see what yeah. happens. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you what to look for. Just find some place you've never been. Yeah. And have an open mind and go read different perspectives than the corporate CIA's feeding you. <laughs> I encourage been people to go, like, go to the source material. You know, when I see like the Supreme Court ruled this, instead of reading ten articles about it, I go read the mm -hmm. ruling. Like, there you, go. you know, if I want to know about a congressional hearing and what was reported, I'll go watch the hearing. You know, all that stuff's available on government websites. And I mean, this isn't like some four chan conspiracy theory. Like, go on a dot gov site and you can read it. You know, man, I. I there's uh there's Vivek once again. He's on um uh, he's on Twitter, uh a Twitter space. <laughs> Man. You see a new uh, a new poll came out. Today. Is he second yet? Is the New second? York Times has released their first New York Times Siena College poll of the 2024 campaign season. The results of the poll show President Donald Trump playing the role of Godzilla in stomping <laughs> the field of Republican candidates. Republican Play-Doh candidates. President Play Trump leads with 54, followed by a ridiculously distant Ron DeSantis at 17. Pence is at three, yeah, Haley's at three, Scott's at three, and Ramaswamy's at two. Ooh. Now listen to the, the, the best part of this whole article. Uh, so who is this great MAGA coalition that fuels Godzilla? The New York Times identifies them thusly. Mr. Trump held decisive advantages across almost every demographic group and region and in every ideological wing of the party, the survey found as Republican voters waved away concerns about his escalating legal jeopardy. He got everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can see that at, at, at the, um, at the events. At Ooh, the, I went uh, back there. I went the back there and peeped on the eerie, man. That was pretty big. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, and, and, and and the debates haven't even happened yet. I mean right. that 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 was a, a nominees, a GOP nominees e rally event. Way before next year. Yeah, don't listen you to know. the news on on the political races. Judge that for yourself, because everybody's trying to get a piece of that pie, and they're coming from all and, and eighty percent of it is anti-Trump. Right. That's the thing. 80, 85% is anti Trump and, and his numbers are still growing. Yep. yep. That's, that's, man, that's, that's so. All weird. I'll tell you is remember who and what organizations are reporting this stuff. Remember that for after the election because they do this all the time. They'll lead up, and then what you'll see is around September, October of next year. You're going to see all these people going for Trump again. Yeah. You know, all these you people know, that are. Yeah. No, no, no. It's funny um, you say that because last night, if you remember, there was that DeSantis video that came out a week or two ago that had the Nazi imagery. And the, yeah. I can't remember who leaked it, but somebody leaked like the source, how it was made. And 
in there was a signal channel which is a messaging app that had all these influencers that are denying being part of the DeSantis campaign that were getting leaked information like hey send this to so and so they'll they'll share this video or send this to so and so they'll share that tweet but you're starting to see those guys hedge a little bit too where they're like it's too late oh, though oh it's too late right yeah where they're like you, oh, well, I, you know, I had some, Trump did some I, good things I had some people that I used to admire and I watched them take that 30 pieces of silver and they've been doing it ever since. And it's like, man, I'm never calling you again. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. mention any names because Wayne might be on the radio soon, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I've, 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 I know I've been muted by many people and, and, and the weird thing is I'm not even one of the real crazy hard, hard ones. I'm willing. Well, I'm not willing to look like um, down the middle on Ron DeSantis, but I'm willing to stick up for mine, but not trash you over yours. I'm not going to trash you over yours. But as I said, I think it was yesterday or whatever. Um, when DeSantis leaves, I could see DeSantis voters not voting for Trump this time, but it doesn't mean a hell of beans because. Trump can pick up Democrats and independents. DeSantis, if he were to win, at least what Jay you said, at least 50% of the MAGA wouldn't vote for him. And the way that he's going right now, I don't know if he would get even 20 on on, on four to five percent of the black vote. And then I don't even know if he would really pick up uh 50% of the independent vote if. I really don't because that's one of the of narratives the they have. They, they have this narrative out there that, uh, that, Oh, the media, they all want Trump to run. No, they don't want Trump to run. No, they don't. Because no, if Trump don't. doesn't run, if Trump doesn't run, the Democrats win everything. Yeah. That's a fact. Well, yeah. If you think of the margin of victory for Joe Biden last time or the margin, he was declared the winner by it's razor thin. And I mean, what do you have? 10% of Republicans that, that are anti-government support President Trump. You know, these are not Republicans. They do not support Mitt Romney. They don't support Speaker McCarthy. They, they are people that the Trump message resonated with. And yes, they're not the government's all Republicans. Trump. They're not all Republicans. No, they're not. I mean, and they voted and for that, President and, Trump. And with all the demonstrably failed things that have happened during the Joe Biden regime, and they remember back in 2016 to 2020. They don't want this, man. The American people do not want this. There's some fools in the middle of the city that don't know don't know where to go. But other than them, I mean, who would want this? Right. Who would want to be going into a nuclear war with Russia who didn't do anything to us? Think about that by itself. Yeah. I mean, to me, that disqualifies every Republican out there that's running for president. Well, the people that want the war are the people that are making money off the war. Sure. And I mean, then the other guy that Ramaswamy Charlie Wilson. He never went to that was a good movie. Ramaswamy <laughs> never was in the military that I know of. Nope. And wants to put trans in the military. I mean, if there was ever something that would destroy <laughs> military cohesion, it's that's that. Hutch is like boom. That 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 hey, some things but, disqualify again, you in my Hey, but trans you, I mean, already in the military, guys. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Well, they weren't. Um, they weren't. And if that's they very, were, very they, recent. Right. Uh, Obama did that one. And then Trump stopped it. And then Biden started back up again. And even when uh, Obama did it, I never saw one. You know, I mean, they say they were there, but I never saw one. But now you can see them. The one that, um, the one that got, uh, the blonde hair one. Well, Obama. You, I, uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah, that one. The guy that gave he up the secret, right? Yeah. yeah, and he got boobs. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I forget his name. <laughs> Bradley I saw Stanley. that, and I don't know if it's confirmed, but it's remarkable the percentage of the trans community that comes back from military backgrounds. I don't know if it's legit. Like I or said, not. I never, I never saw any of them. I was wow. in thirty-five years. I right. got out in twenty sixteen. I knew, I knew, I knew. 
My I friends told of, me they were starting to come in. I knew of some some homosexuals that. Uh, yeah, I knew, I knew a couple of them, not many. We caught one uh, in the day room doing something, and they swore, please don't turn them away. Please, please don't turn them away. Please. Uh, but uh, when I know when I was in basic training, they were like, uh, we, you know, if you want to get out of the military, that's one way to get out is yep. that you tell them that you're a homosexual. But you, but, but, <laughs> but, hey, and the military, um, the military was smart on this. They're like, you can say homosexual to get out, but we're not just going to let you out. You got to write <laughs> what you did, who, who you did it with, and how you did it. So we have a record of it. <laughs> if it ever comes down, we have a record of it. But no, um, we were talking about um, do Democrats, well, actually, we were talking about Dan Goldman. Let's play this one. And I want to be very clear about one thing. Uh, he did describe that there were a, a, approximately 20 occasions over the course of their uh, nearly decade-long business relationship where when one of them called the other, um, that Hunter Biden would uh, ask his father to say hello to whomever he was at dinner. He said there were sometimes when it was friends and sometimes when it was uh, potential business partners or business partners. But the witness was unequivocal and stated very clearly that they never discussed any business on that phone conversations. There were niceties and there was a hello and there we talked about the weather or whatever it was, but it was never any business. Kind of like the mob. That's a, and that's the thing too. Did any Republican come out and say something to the contrary of what he said? I mean, like to me, that's not the only, I mean, like he doesn't get off scot-free because he didn't say anything. That's part of right, the plan. Right, right. Right, right. I mean, it's like the dude's right here, man. Hi, how you doing? Bye. <laughs> well, that's what I was talking now about you know, earlier. You know what you're buying now. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was talking about earlier. Hunter Biden, I have a business where I sell access and have influence over foreign policy. Here is right, my dad. Isn't that right, dad? Yeah, hi. Right. How you doing? Bye. Right. And so, so the best defense they would say is, yeah, Hunter did all this shady stuff and Joe didn't know about it. So throw Hunter in jail. I, that's I mean, what I'm afraid of. Right. That That's where I think. See, again, they got Hunter. They got him. Who right. Cares, though? They You're got right. him dead. They got him dead to right. They are trying to go after Joe now. That, and, and what they and, should be doing, they shouldn't go after Joe. They should go after Merrick Garland. Yeah. Why not? Why not get him? Get because somebody he's like the that. one stopping the investigation. Yep, exactly. exactly. That would connect the final dots. Exactly, because well, then, because then, if you go after Mark Garland, then you won't have Democrats get, going on talk shows. But have they pointed to anything to suggest that Joe Biden engaged in corrupt behavior? No. And on the contrary, Hunter Biden's business problems uh, partner said, uh, yeah, he was on some phone calls talking about the weather, talking about the weather, exchanging pleasantries. You know, is that in the category of, you know, uh, presidential family members that are problematic? Billy Carter, Hugh Rodham, maybe it's in that category, but it is sure and absolutely not a crime. So. This guy, here's the part that gets me every time when I hear this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. This guy does not care that China and Russia own us. Right. That's the that's the issue. The issue is not Joe Biden. The issue is the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, and these people cannot be trusted to defend it. Yep. Well, and to, like he proves his own point. Joe Biden is sitting there at dinner with these people who are looking to pay somebody for government influence. Why are you at dinner? Why are you doing business with Hunter? Because I want government influence. Here's my dad. And understand that government influence, there's nothing good at all that can come from that for any American. Right. Foreign government influence is horrible. Right. And it's punishable by death, by the way. Well, and that's what I mean when they say, like, where's the evidence? Like, how about and, come and help us find the evidence? Right. 
and Merrick Garland, you hit the nail on the head. That guy needs to go to Gitmo. Yep. Because yeah. you've and got Mike like Christian five Wright. different whistleblowers. So the IRS hearing was the latest one, but you had it on the Twitter files and multiple other other of these investigations where they said we got here and then we needed to interview XYZ to complete the circle. And the Department of Justice said no. Like we couldn't even go interview these people. They're the ones that should have intervened at the very beginning. Look at how many Ukrainians have been murdered because of Joe Biden. Yep. And Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. You know, this is this is madness. And we're on the brink of a nuclear confrontation because the freaking DOJ will not do their job. Right. The system's all set up to defeat this, and they didn't do it because they're on the other side. I will say, in a rare compliment to Mitch McConnell, he was the one that stopped Merrick Garland from being a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> so while we respectfully wish Mitch good, good health and... <laughs> Moving into his retirement, like, can you imagine Merrick Garland on the Supreme well, look Court? Look what we got now. Right. That Katanji James, she's just as bad, too. Oh, oh I got to say, I mentioned she's earlier. She's lying on her things. She's writing her, dissert, or her uh, whatever they call it, their brief, their, and it's like lies in it. Yeah. It's crazy. Supreme Court justice. It's funny you say that because I mentioned when a ruling comes out, I'll go back and read it. And, like, these are available on government websites. And I read her, like, dissent before I go read what people think about it. And then, like, it'll mention court case, and you go search the court case. And you're like, I'm no lawyer, but you are dumb. Like, this isn't even, like, she's citing court cases that got thrown out and reversed. And I'm like, oh, God, did that really happen? And you look it up, and it's like, yeah, the appellate court said that was a ridiculous ruling and threw it out. But it's in the Supreme Court ruling. Like, 50 years from now, somebody's going to reference her opinion about a case that was thrown out and people don't like, yeah, that should be troubling, but that's what equity hiring gets you. When you start hiring people based on immutable characteristics instead of abilities, congratulations. Yeah. You get the U S military. Oh yeah. Boy, did you see that thing today too, where they're talking about instituting some sort of draft? No, I mean, it's an inevitable conclusion. We've heard. Yeah. 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 We've heard that for a long time now. Yeah, so, but the numbers right. now are, are like before we had a gung ho military. People yeah, wanted to go that. there. Now yeah. they're running away. The other, they're going to have you watch and mark my words. These freaking Ill illegal aliens are going to be our army. All right, just like they're well, going to be the cops in Illinois. They already With did it in flag. Illinois. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting you say that. So if you look at the military, we've sent all our equipment to Ukraine, so we don't got no equipment. And first, we start letting in a bunch of people that can't meet the physical requirements. Like, that's one of the underreported things of the women and the trans stuff. They yep. lowered the physical requirements for these people to be mm -hmm. in the military. So you're mm -hmm. not getting. They did that 40 years ago, though. Oh, right. But it keeps getting worse. Yeah, they keep on adding waivers. Now right. the, trans, the trans don't have to uh, go by the height, weight, body standards, and they don't have to run. Right. So you have all these military personnel that physically can't do the job. Yeah, or or right. they don't have to that I, I got that wrong. They don't have to deploy. Right. So now you got this guy in your unit and you're getting ready to leave your little two year old baby and go over to Afghanistan or something. And this dude doesn't have to go. And he's making as much or more than you. Right. That's not a yeah. good cohesion tool. Yeah. See, I think, though, all they got to do is anybody with the Ukraine flag in their bio. Congratulations, you're drafted. <laughs> we got to get ready to go. Um, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the show. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's hump day, as a matter of fact. It's August 1st already. I can't believe uh, that. July's gone. Summer's yeah. fast, man. Man. It's, it's Jason, give me some last thoughts. All right, I'm going to give you one thought. This was something I had, had revisited. Anybody who thinks the media is not corrupt, go back and look. It's on a government website, Joe Biden's tax returns, 2017. It was uh, He went from making $0 to having a company with $17 million. One would think the, that somebody would look into that. Hey, what's this LLC do? No reporting on it. Over in the uh, military arena, Democrat Alabama Representative Terry Sewell denounced the Biden administration's decision to cancel the transfer of the U.S. Space Command headquarters from Colorado to Alabama, calling Alabama. the move shameful. 
Alabama won that contest three times, fair and square, and that Space Command should go to Alabama, not Colorado Springs. And Tuberville said he is not going to stop until it is down there. Coming up behind, well, coming up behind the Wayne Dupree Show is behind the network at Red Voice Media. We want y'all to have a great evening. Don't forget to hug the family for us. We'll see you tomorrow.